Morning, church. So some of the kids up here were a little bit tired, uh, maybe because they needed a little bit more sleep. I don't know, parents. Uh, uh, make sure that they get their rest tonight because uh, there's a lot of greening still falling and a lot of allergies. But uh, you guys all don't seem tired. God is good and all the time. Amen. That reverse psychology of being like, hey, where are you guys is working. I'm just going to keep doing that from now and be like, wow, you guys look great. And it works. So I enjoy it. Uh, if you're visiting with us this morning, welcome. Those kids are all going to what we call Imagination Station. If I can say that correctly, Imagination Station, which is a class for our kids to be able to, from three-year-old to fourth grade, to be able to hear the story about Jesus and how Jesus blesses our life in a way that connects with them to do arts and crafts. Sometimes they do puppets. Everybody that participates in that ministry that teaches, thank you so much for the fantastic job you do in blessing our kids. Because if you're visiting here with us today, I want to let you know that we are a church that is simply a group of people from really young to really old, seeking to follow Jesus and understand what that means, to trust him and follow him. It's that simple who we are. And you are more than welcome here to be a part of who we are and what we're doing if you're willing to join Jesus and follow him in everything. So we just want to invite you to come be a part of that. I hope you felt welcome. I hope you enjoyed the coffee and donuts if you're able to get some and just the fellowship that we've had together in the singing. Um, if you're live streaming along with us today, welcome. It's good to have you be able to join us as well. And my family's there. Hi, guys. I miss you. And so uh, um, please pray for my kids. They're, they're struggling with a little bug this past weekend and, or this weekend. So please keep them in your mind as you pray for them. Um, the elders, about three, almost four weeks ago now, we had a meeting. The elders were there. The ministers, Zach and I, were there in the room meeting. And the elders have really taken it to heart to talk about what it means to truly be disciples of Jesus and how we are going to go about that. And they studied Colossians chapter 3. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there because that's where we're going to be today. But they looked at Colossians chapter 3 and read that together. And in the midst of their discussion, they looked at me and said, Ty, we want you to teach this. We believe that Jesus, the truth of life in him, is powerful and effective, and it is present in our lives today. Because we think that there are too many people that think about what it means to be a Christian as a future-only event when Jesus comes again, and we really want to make sure that we get across that this blesses our life even now. And I said, yes, I can do that. I'm all on board for that because it's the theme. It's what we've been doing. Denny started this with the University of Jesus, and I'm continuing of what we've been doing of sharing that. And so they said, Ty, we're not sure where we're uh, not communicating, but we want you to communicate this. And I said, oh, you just put a lot on my plate because we've been doing this for a while, trying to share this and get out this message of Jesus. And so I said, all right, I can do this, but I'm going to build up to that. And so for the last two weeks, I've been getting ready for this sermon this morning to share, to kick off, not kick off, but to full, continue to bless our theme for the year of life of worship. And I have to tell you, I was nervous, not about the text. Like this sermon is great and easy this morning. I could read Colossians chapter three and get down and be done. And it is good, good news and it is good word. Here's the part I was nervous about. I know that you all expect from me to do something other than just read to you to share, to connect Bible stories and do that. And for the last three weeks, I have been struggling about what metaphor, example, story, whatever you want to call it, I was going to use to connect to the message this morning. Because I was like, it's got to be good. It's got to be big and it's got to be great. You know what? I'll tell the story of Zacchaeus. And I went, wait, hold on a moment. I've already been doing that in the life of worship theme. You know what? I'll tell the story of Paul. Wait, we're already doing that on Wednesday nights as we're looking at the gospel or the, the message of Acts as Luke shares with us the story of Paul. And I kept going through story after story after story of what I was going to do. And I had a message set up and I was ready, but last night God showed me a better message, showed me a better story. Last night God showed me the truth that life in Jesus, setting our minds on Jesus is effective and powerful for our lives today, right now, and every single moment of our lives. And it happened like this. For those of you, um, well, I'm going to share to you a little bit of history and then connect with what happened last night. Restoration Life Center is our, uh, our, our homeless shelter here in town. 
There are many people here at Rockadine that are involved with the ministry that goes on there. If you've not heard the term, the term Restoration Life Center, we normally just use RLC to talk about it. You probably remember it as Cross Lines because it changed names about, what was it, Kale, like five, six years ago when it changed names? And most of us may not know it as the homeless shelter, but may know it as the thrift store. Now, you guys connecting for those of you that aren't, aren't there? Cross Lines was the thrift store, ended up moving, and now it's Restoration Life Center because the ministry of the homeless shelter has changed. The thrift store, the, um, the income from that, helps to bless the homeless shelter with the needs of the shelter, but also that the people that are at the shelter, if they need a job for the day, they're able to go to the thrift store and to experience what it means to work and to have purpose and opportunity and to be able to serve in a day-to-day -day capacity in some form or another. And so when it became Restoration Life Center, the board of Restoration Life Center and those involved in the ministry decided that we want this ministry to, I'm gonna use a term now that's a bit harsh, but it, it is kind of what expectations are sometimes. We want this ministry to become something more than just a flop house. Something more than just a place for somebody who's homeless to have a bed at night. We believe that in Jesus, that there can be more than worrying about if you're gonna have shelter for the day that you can have life, or shelter for the evening, that you can have life for the day, you can have life in every aspect of it. So last night, the board here at the um, of Restoration Life Center used the building here, and we had a pizza party for um, uh, residents of Restoration Life Center who had been going through different classes and graduated, uh, and they were um, given certificates of going through these different uh, classes, these different ministries that they were a part of. The two different classes that they were given one was one was an anger management class, and the other one is called, uh, um, oh, Kale, help me out. It slipped my mind all of a sudden. Living Freely, something like that? Living free, there it is. Living free. Well, it's called Living Free, and it's a class about how to overcome your addictions, and it also incorporates getting um, rid of uh, past adverse experiences that you've had in your childhood and being able to deal with them. And so I was like, yeah, we're going to do a certi certification party. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have pizza. We're going to fellowship and do this. And I was just about the event and the simplicity of it the whole night. But when the certificates started to be given out, the residents of Restoration Life Center, anytime their, their fellow residents would get up there, they would go, speech, speech. And they would get up there and they would give speeches. And here's what I found out about what is going on at Restoration Life Center. They are setting their minds on Jesus. People who have found themselves homeless for myriads of reasons are here in a shelter receiving ministry that is focused on Jesus, and they are learning about the truth that they can get their kids back if they've lost their kids because of bad lifestyles. They are learning that anger does not have to define them and set them, but that if they set their minds on Jesus, that they can actually have joy and peace. And when somebody comes up, as what happened this past week, because when you have groups of people together, sometimes there's bad, bad things happen. When somebody comes up and punches somebody else, that the somebody else that was punched doesn't have to respond the same way that they once responded. They can find peace and joy and seek forgiveness and try to do right relationship. They have learned that addictions, sexual addictions, chemical addictions, um, relationship addictions, that all of those things do not have to define what their life is. That if they set their minds on Jesus, that they can have life and have it abundantly and live better. And they have learned that setting their minds on Jesus is the way to go, the way of life. And I saw these guys with tattoos all over their face saying, Jesus is Lord last night. I saw them celebrating each other's stories where normally when somebody gets up and tells a story, we're like, oh, there he goes. I, I, I know how some of us are. They're like, oh, so-and-so is telling their story again. But no, instead they were celebrating and sharing. And I saw God's presence. I saw the presence of Jesus in the midst of a group of people. We don't normally expect the presence of Jesus to be there saw them celebrate that one of them was about to go travel to another state. And without telling us exactly what was going on, we all knew what was going on. To be able to take care of business, which meant legal problems, so that they could come back and be part of the family again without the weight of the legal problems on their back any longer. 
And God shared the story with me last night and a couple of others of us like Hale who were there. And we got to watch these stories being shared and the joy that was there and realize the truth that if we set our minds on Jesus, that there is life and there's life abundance for all of us. For all of us, it doesn't matter where we've been in the struggles or the blessings that we've been in the midst of, that we all need Jesus in order to live. So in Colossians, Paul writes to a group of Christians that he downright loves. He loves them because of their faith in Jesus, and he's never met them. He lets us know a couple times in Colossians that they've never been face-to-face, and he would love to be able to meet them. But what he loves is their joy in Jesus, that they have set their minds on Jesus. But there's a problem. There have been teachers who have come in to the church in Colossae, and they said, this is too simple. In order to follow Jesus and do spiritual, you got to do these big spiritual things. It cannot be this simple. Let us teach you the high things of what it means to, to know the way and to do all that. And they came in there and given all this news, and Paul heard about it, and he's like, whoa, hold up, guys. I'm sending you this letter because you need to know that Jesus is first, that he is the smartest man who's ever been here, and you can set your minds on him. It is that simple, and it does bless your life that much. So last night, I went to a pizza party thinking that it was going to be um, incredibly simple in the sense of what I was thinking, and I saw the complexity of the simplicity of putting your mind, setting your mind on Jesus, and how it transforms a group of people to do wonderful things. If you've not visited Restoration Life Center, volunteered, gone to the uh, thrift store even, and gotten to meet the people that their lives are changing here in our community, you need to take some time and go over there and do it. Um, our, the, just the thrift store itself is a beautiful truth of the ministry of what Jesus does and how it transforms. And you're going to find a place where you're going to see in the simplicity of setting your mind on Jesus, it changes every aspect of our lives in simple and good ways. No longer do we need to think that following Jesus is this complex, outlandish, future-only oriented thing that's going to happen. But the simplicity of the truth is, if you're a follower of Jesus, you are saved now, you are right now in his kingdom, and it blesses every aspect of your life now. Here's how Paul teaches this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, which is Christ, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We're going to start right there. This morning in our Bible class, we talked about heaven and how we would define heaven if somebody asked us what heaven is. And too often people think of heaven as being some place that's far, far away that we hope to be able to get to, to be able to see. And there's aspects of that that is true in a sense, but not true in the sense of the far, far away. It's the hope part that's true. But what happens is we end up separating it out and we feel like it's a place that we can't get to because we're not good enough. But look how Paul started this. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is. If you have been raised with Christ, where Christ is, where are you? Setting your hearts on things above. Too often when we hear that phrase, we talk about it as if it's some spiritual reality that's far removed or far above us. And what Paul is saying is saying, no, Jesus is first, he's preeminent, and he's the smartest man ever, and you're with him if you're following him and trusting him. It affects every single thing of your life in a good way. It builds you up and makes you better. Where like the stories I heard last night, again, I heard stories of guys excited about the truth. They're going to be able to be with their kids again. They're, they have future hopeful expectations of being able to have their own house, being able to um, serve the Lord in many different ways and trust him. And Jesus was always first in the stories that I heard last night. So Paul continues on and says this, Set your minds on things above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. So, Like every good teacher, Paul says, all right, I'm going to tell you what the opposite of that is to help you understand where you're at. 
pay attention to this because this is what it means to not set your mind on things above, not set your minds on Jesus. When he says this in verse number five, put to death, therefore, that which is earthly in, in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. And these you too once walked when you were living in them. He says, all right, guys, since you are setting your mind on things above, here's the things to go ahead and get rid of. Quit getting angry about everything. Quit having envy, greed, malice, impurity, sexual morality, lust, evil desires, idolatry. Get rid of those things. Those aren't the ways of following Jesus. And here's what you should notice. If those things are coming into your life, are you setting your mind on things above that currently affect your life that bless you? He says, here's what you need to watch out for. He continues on and says, do not lie, or but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. He says, all right, I'm going to even bring this a little bit more home. Here's the things you need to put off, because if you set your mind on things above, these other things won't show up in your life. Last night, I heard stories of how guys talked about when they were dealing with addictions and getting over them, like alcoholism or other things. They talked about, yeah, there were times where it was a struggle. I would get angry so easy if my temper was short. I was, I was jealous of other people that didn't have the same problem I did. And when I thought about that, I thought about doing these things. And they ended their story always. But when I thought about Jesus and I set my mind on him, I was able to get over these things. Living free and anger management class that they did were all focused on the Bible, on the truth that Jesus is Lord. And brothers and sisters, I think the same thing is true for us. Oh, actually, let me rephrase that. I know the same thing is true for us. Paul is telling us that it doesn't matter if you've needed to be in a shelter or somewhere else needed therapy or whatever, but if you set your mind on Jesus, that is the first point, the starting point of being able to get rid of these earthly things that are holding you back from the spiritual reality of your life in the kingdom of heaven now. Another way of saying it and saying it simply and what we've been talking about this year is when Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me, Go and make disciples and be disciples. He's saying, I believe in you. You can do this. You can be like me. Set your mind on things above. Paul continues on verse 10 and says this, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The beautiful truth of what Paul's telling the church in Colossae and what he is telling us today is that by setting our mind on things above, which is Jesus because he was raised to the right hand of the Father, we are simply living life the way God intended it to be. We're putting on the new self, which is being renewed. I like that phrase. Let me tell you why I like that phrase. There are times where I forget to set my mind on things above. There are times where life just wows me and stuns me. And my reaction at times is a bit, uh, well, I'll just say, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I struggle with anger. It's one of the sins I struggle with. I want to fix things immediately. I want things to be exactly right. And when things aren't going right, I wonder, I, 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 like, I need to insert myself hard on that because I'm worried about what everybody else thinks about me. And if I'm doing good enough to please them. <laughs> Last night, my dogs were barking. They were barking up a ferocious terror. And I was like, what in the world is going on outside? The sun had gone down. It was just, it was just past dusk. It was, getting, it was just light enough to be able to see, but not light enough that I didn't need a flashlight. So I went down. I actually put some shorts on, good, thank goodness. And I, I, I got clothes on because it was cold outside and went outside my front porch to see what my dogs were barking at because I thought for sure somebody was on my property and I was going to have to take care of business. It's like, what in the world's going on? Doesn't help that Karina was sharing a Facebook thing about some guys that have recently gone into houses here in Neosho, and that's where her mind was at, and that's what put my mind at that. My mind wasn't on Jesus, by the way. 
my mind was on, I gotta fix this, my dogs are barking. So I went out there with my flashlight. I mean, it's a big flashlight, I can throw it or something if I need to. When I get out there, I look for where my dogs are barking and I see this beautiful painted horse standing in my yard that does not belong in my yard and my dogs are barking up a fire at this thing. I go inside, now I'm all excited. I'm, I'm, still, not, I'm not, still not putting my things, my heart, my thoughts on things above. I'm still not thinking about Jesus. I'm just thinking, hey, Evelyn loves horses. Evelyn, come out here. You gotta come see this. Karina, come out here. And so I've got the flashlight. I'm showing them the horse and my dogs are barking at it and then I notice its back legs start twitching. Now, when a cow, when a horse's back, like you notice their back muscles start twitching, what, what do you think's about to happen? They're gonna kick, right? That they're frustrated, that they're upset. And my mind goes back to, Ty, you gotta fix everything, thoughts. I'm like, oh no, I notice it has a harness on its face. So I'm like, all right guys, where's my lead rope? And, uh, cause I've got goats and I have a lead rope for the goats and it's been moved. And I'm like, guys, where did you move my rope? And I'm sure my voice is getting louder and I'm getting upset and I'm getting, on it, I'm getting agitated. My heart is not set on things above. I'm thinking about things that I have to fix. I'm being earthly and going through all of this stuff, what's going on. Finally, I go get one of the dog uh, leashes. I get it connected to that horse. I think the horse is gonna kick my dog and kill it and it's gonna throw me. And then I, I put the leash to the horse and it just starts following me. <laughs> And we get down the, down the way, I go to the neighbors where I think the horse came from, and I spend this fantastic time in conversation with my neighbors, where I am reminded as I'm walking the horse down the road, I had about 10 minutes to think about this, I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself, and love the Lord my God with everything that I am, and trust him, and to know that he's given me abilities and talents to be able to be a part of his kingdom to where I can remove all malice, all anger, all envy, all lust, all sexual morality, all these things that impact us all throughout our day, that I can live in the kingdom of heaven now and experience the truth that God is with me. Because that's what heaven is, is God with us. Paul says, put on the new self, which is being renewed. Last night I was renewed twice in the kingdom of God. I was reminded over and over again that I am not my own any longer. That because of Jesus, I am made new. And so as I spent time with my neighbors, I found out that that horse they just recently got from a rescue that night, she is a vet tech. And the reason why the horse looked like it was going to kick and destroy my dogs the whole entire time is because he has a nervous problem, a, a muscle problem. I don't know exactly what it was in his back legs. And he would constantly just kind of move his legs because it's like restless leg syndrome. And everything that I saw when I wasn't setting my mind on things above was wrong and created more problem and turmoil than should have been there. When I got back home, I apologized to my family. I said, guys, I'm so sorry for yelling. I was so nervous. I was scared our dogs were gonna get kicked. I was scared that something was gonna happen to you and I, I'm sorry. And they responded as soon as I came in as I'm saying sorry and saying, Dad, you're our hero. <laughs> you saved the day, you took care of the horse. And Jesus was there the whole time. Now, that's a story that's kind of, we don't normally have horses show up in our yards, do we? But we do have everyday events that happen to us that we need to be reminded that we are putting on the new self because Jesus raised us up to be with him in the heavenly places so we can set our minds above and the knowledge in the image of its creator, which means we were made to be in relationship with God. We were made to be without malice, to be without anger, to be without greed, sexual morality, that long list of things that he says that we struggle with every single day. He continues on and says these beautiful words. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Man, I wish I had more patience last night. I, I would have looked a whole lot better <laughs> and treated everybody a whole lot better. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. 
and whatever you do. It doesn't say what you do in the future when Jesus comes again. He says, now, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You were created to be right in right relationship with God and with God's creation. You were created to not have sin. But the problem is, is that sin has invaded our lives. There is corruption. There's brokenness that's out there in the world that gives us reasons to have fear, anxiety, all those things that bring up anger, malice, all that, that jealousy, that stuff that ends up happening in our lives. In Jesus, we have been given a way to realize that we can set our minds on things above that doesn't mean that we set our mind on things that are like lofty up there. That's the only place that God is. What that means is that God comes down with us in Jesus and joins us. That we are able to know that when he joins us, we're able to know that we're able to be with him. That he is present in every aspect of our day. That when I have pizza parties and when horses show up in my yard, that God is there. When you wake up in the morning, so when you fall down in your bed at night and sleep, I guess we don't fall down in our beds. I'm sorry about the weird metaphor. But when you go to sleep at night, that God is there, that he is caring for you, loving you, and that every aspect of everything that you are is good. We can put on the new self because Jesus makes us new. And what I want to encourage you is that sin, even though you may participate in every now and then, even though your patience may get thin, Sin no longer has a reign over us. If you are in Jesus, you are a new creation. God has joined you. Heaven and earth are not separated by this huge chasm, this huge gulf anymore, because we have put away the earthly things of our life because of what Jesus has done for us. You have been made new. Put on the new self that's being made new and live by the joy of of that humility, that kindness, that patience, those love, that peace that Paul talks about here, and know that it can be a part of your everyday life. I can give you example after example of what, how you should do that, but all of our lives are different. We all have different experiences day in and day out where we must just be reminded that simply set your mind on Jesus. I promise you if I would have done that last night, set my mind on Jesus before I try to fix the problem by myself, that I would have treated my family better and things would have went better. I wouldn't have to go back home and say, I'm sorry. But I'm learning. I'm growing. And so are you. The path of discipleship is a journey of becoming more like Jesus every day, recognizing the truth that we don't have to be perfect because he makes us perfect. And because of that, we can live by the good things of the Spirit that makes us new. So I want to encourage you this. God is with you. Set your mind on things above. It's not a thing that's far up there, that's far away from you. It's a truth that he is with us in this life for every aspect, for everything that we go through. And it is a blessing to know that we are disciples of Jesus, that he believes in us to be like him, and we can have that life now. If you are ready to be a follower of Jesus and have not followed him in faith and baptism, come follow him. Set your mind on things above. I promise you, it changes your life. You end up noticing things and seeing the Spirit at work in you. I know the Spirit was convicting me as I was guiding that horse down my driveway going, what in the world did you just do right there? I felt the still voice in my soul saying, you should have done that better. And I was thankful for that. The Spirit works on you in that same way as you follow Jesus. I want to encourage you in that. And if you need prayer for anything, anything, let's pray together. It can be, you can call me through the week, call one of our elders through the week and pray together, or you can come and let's pray as a family of Christ together about life. Because Jesus came to give us life and to give it to us abundantly. And there are things that happen in life because the corruption of sin is still here that we need to go to God about and say, God, help me set my mind on things that are above. Help me look to you in all things. If you need prayer or you're ready to follow Jesus, come forward when we stand and sing. And I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And I pray the Lord turns his face to you and gives you his peace. Let us stand and sing.